Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure if I was going to film this video or not. In all honesty, I've sat down and tried to film this several times already. I wasn't sure if I wanted this to be more of a wrap up or more like a recommendations kind of video or part of like a series of like end of 2020 videos because I know that's what a lot of other YouTubers do. But I really wanted to film this, I've just decided to do this, just make a video. And so today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some of my favourite books of 2020. A favourites video? A 2020 wrap up, best books, a recommendations video, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to be talking to you guys about some good books, good fucking books, that I read last year. Last year was a really good reading year for me. I read 159 books, which is the most that I've read in a really, really long time. Um, but not only did I read a lot, I gave a lot of high ratings to a lot of books. I did think about going and making a like worst books of 2020 video, decided I didn't want to do that because I don't really want to promote books that I just didn't like and also when I was going through all the books I read I could only really pick out three or four books that were truly terrible and that I would talk about in that video. So I actually didn't read that many bad books last year. Probably definitely a few average ones. I don't know what my average rating for last year was, but going through finding books for this video, there were plenty to choose from. I'm not going to talk about all of my like five star reads. I've gone ahead and picked like my favorite favorites from last year. And I've ended up with seven. Seven picks. Very, very excited to talk to you about them. Very, very excited to get into it. Before we do though, I did want to give, I guess, like, uh, an honorable mention to two other, no, three other books. The first two I want to talk about are written by the same author. And those two are The Night Circus and The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I loved both of these so so much you have no idea Erin Morgenstern is like easily definitely no doubt one of my favorite authors now her writing is incredible magical fantastical her books made me cry they made me laugh uh they were okay I was gonna say they were really hard to put down and they were but they were also both kind of difficult to get into but it's really really worth it if you're struggling to get into her books oh my gosh please persevere get through it because these books are beautiful the only reason i'm not including these like in the final like top seven picks uh one i didn't give the style of c five stars i gave it four stars and two uh, this book came out in like 2011 10 years ago I think everyone under the sun has already read this book. Anyone under the sun who like likes fantasy and wants to read this book has already read it. We all, like, I don't think it's news that Erin Morgenstern is an incredible writer and that these books are like amazing, but it was news to me. <laughs> and so I just like, I had to mention how incredible they were because it like truly, I will be rereading them probably every year until the year that I die because these books chef's kiss and then i also want to give an honorable mention to chain of gold by cassandra clare i don't think i ever like really talk about it but i have loved the shadow hunter series since maybe maybe 2011 probably not probably like 2012 either way a long time and ever since i started reading the shadow hunter books i have loved every single one. I don't think I have given any of these books anything other than a five star rating. They're just like, they're just immediate faves for me. It's like my crack. Genuinely, like a book comes out from Cassandra Clare, I'm like, take my money. Ta take it. And then I like inhale the book because it's just, it's just so good. And this one was no exception. Um, and even though it came out in 2020 it was a new release I just like it doesn't feel worthy enough to mention in my favorites because it's like it's no surprise to me that I love this of course I love this it's a fucking shadow hunter book so I thought I would just give it an honorable mention but save the favorites video 
for books that are more like new to me, new favorites, genuine gold finds, right? But honorable mention, Shadowhunter, Chain of Gold, the new one, new series, there you go. Okay, now that I have those off my conscience, let's move on to my top seven reads of 2020. I'm just gonna go through and talk about them in chronological order, so like from the one that I read first to the one that I read last. So this isn't like ranked in like least to most favorite. These are all books that I genuinely love in different ways, but all like all genuinely love. So the first book that I want to talk to you about is actually three books. It's a trilogy. Um, I read this in February. The first two books were rereads for me, but the third and final one came out in January. 2020 and that is the truly devious trilogy by Maureen Johnson. I actually think it is like a crime for how underrated these books are. I know they're not like totally unknown. I know I've heard people talk about them. I've heard people read them, but these are so so good and I just I feel like I haven't seen anyone like absolutely gush about them, absolutely like love them as much as they deserve. And let me tell you this trilogy deserves it all. Oh my god. A little story. In 2019, I picked up Truly Devious on a whim, like just randomly. I wanted something to read. I think I saw it on Goodreads. Someone else had read it. So I went, I picked it up, and I finished the book in about two hours. Like the blink of an eye, the book was over. I was obsessed. Immediately went and got the second book thinking that it was a duology. Big mistake. Finished the second book like two hours after that. Felt totally betrayed because the mystery hadn't been solved. It's, it's a mystery series by the way. And on top of that I had to wait until January 2020 to get the final book and find out how the mystery ends but that's fine but that's okay 2020 January the third book came out and I read it about two hours five stars oh my gosh such a good ending so let me tell you a little bit about the series now that I've told you my my terrible story about the series this is a young adult trilogy mystery very like dark academia not necessarily thriller but like kind of spooky vibes. We follow Stevie who gets accepted into this very prestigious school. It's a school, it's a school, I don't want to say for gifted kids, it's a school for interested kids. Every kid that gets accepted into the school has a very like specific interest, a very specific niche. Stevie's interest is true crime and she applies to the school saying that she wants to solve the crime that actually took place at the school. So we find out that this school was founded by a, I think he's like a celebrity figure. He was either a celebrity or just someone who was really, really rich. And he was very passionate about education and letting kids learn how they wanted to learn. So he opened the school on the top of a hill in Vermont. And the year the school opened, there was a terrible crime and the founder did he die i can't even remember so don't take that as a spoiler but like something really serious happened to the founder and his family it was a big crime and it was unsolved no one could figure it out it has remained unsolved for years and stevie applies to this school saying that she wants to look into it she wants to try and solve it that's the basic premise so we follow stevie as she goes to the school and she starts looking into the crime but it is told in on like a dual timeline so we also get flashbacks to when the crime was actually happening and there was also like a little bit of crime going on in the modern day like when stevie is at the school and i mean this was one of like the first mystery kind of books that i had ever read um, so I, I mean, I don't really want to say that it's like the best mystery and like the best mystery book that you'll ever read, but it is so entertaining, so suspenseful, and I'm not even, like, truly the end shocked me. The end was a real shocker, and not that I am the best at predicting how books end, especially mysteries, because as I just said, I haven't really read many. I was not expecting the ending. 
It's uh, genuinely some of the best YA I have ever read. The next book I want to talk about, also kind of a mystery, or at least a mystery vibe. Funny, it actually was the winner, or no, it was nominated in the Goodreads Choice Awards Romance category for 2019, and that is Verity by Colleen Hoover. Straight up, I don't see why it was put in the romance category in 2019, because this, if it is a romance, it's a very fucked up kind of romance. It's like, it's really not. I think it only got put in there because Colleen Hoover, I think, usually writes romance. Um, and I guess this is like a kind of mystery thriller based around relationships, and there is a lot of sex in it. But it's like, it's not, please don't go into this thinking that this is going to be like a cute, nice romance. It's, it is absolutely not. But let me tell you, this book kept me up until the late hours of the night and I genuinely felt a little bit terrified. I was tense. I was a little bit spooked. I'm not going to lie because this was just so, so good. So Verity follows this writer can't remember her name I'm so sorry but essentially this writer gets offered a job of finishing a series that this other writer has started writing but halfway through writing the series this other also got into an accident and while she's still alive she cannot complete the series she's a no like she's in no way to like finish writing a book series but she's already had the deal like with her company she's got like a few more books that are set to come out so her husband like starts looking for writers who can come in and like pretty much ghostwrite the rest of the series so we follow this writer who gets chosen to do this finish writing the series but she gets to go to this family's house so she goes to the author's house she gets to stay there with the husband and the kid the one kid two kid one one kid the their son and let me tell you shit gets weird shit gets real weird it would be so much better if i could like if i remembered the main character's name but basically she goes she stays at this house and she gets given access to like all of this writer's um like notes and like information on the series but she also comes across a few things that probably shouldn't be found that makes her a little bit suspicious of the family. I don't want to say too much because it's meant to be suspenseful and, you know, a mystery. But again, this was just so fun, so unexpected. I think I really liked it because I, one, went in expecting a romance again not a not a romance please don't go in thinking that it's a romance but that that like worked out well for me i really ended up enjoying it and and secondly i haven't as i said i haven't read many like mystery thriller kind of stories um so so it was very exciting for me very kind of new and fun different to what i usually read it just really worked for me it was just really great something I never thought that I would read and probably never would if I had been told that it was like a thriller and not a romance. So a surprise. A good surprise in the end. Next I want to talk about another series, another trilogy. If you follow me on Instagram you might know is a favorite of mine. I read the first two books in March last year and then the third book came out last November. So I read the whole trilogy in 2020 and that is the Poppy War trilogy by R.F. Kwan. This is a dark fantasy series uh, based on the Chinese, so the Opium Wars, I believe. At least the Poppy War is. I think the second book, The Dragon Republic, and the third book, The Burning God, are based on another bit of Chinese history. But the whole series is based on Chinese history, and it, uh, I mean, it's about a war. Really, if you couldn't guess from the title of the first book, The Poppy War, it's about a war. These books just have, like, everything. Uh, they were just so, so good. Really well-developed characters, really great gripping plot. Good fantasy, like a good magic system, not too difficult to, like, understand or get into uh, and explained really, really well. Definitely dark. I genuinely kind of forget sometimes how dark this series is. Please, before you read this, go ahead. There are a bunch of places online where you can check 
trigger warnings for this series and you genuinely might need it because there are a lot of trigger warnings for this series because it's it's a very very dark series very very dark covers a lot of very very dark topics i'm not gonna lie though when i read it i genuinely didn't even like notice how dark it was i was just so invested in the story i was actually going to do a vlog where um for the burning god when it came out and i filmed it but i didn't end up editing it or releasing it before the end of the year i mean if you still want to see it i could still edit and upload it um it was a very emotional vlog i did cry at the end of the burning god i also cried at the end of the dragon republic too i i get emotional just thinking about it the second book really broke my heart and the third book it was also sad but like in a more like I'm really sad that this series is coming to an end kind of way. It was also a very sad ending in general. All in all emotional. An emotional. It was an emotional time for me. I also just have to say that I really appreciate Rin as a main character. She is one of my standout favorite female leads which is interesting because she is not very likable. She was just so great to read. Really, 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 really interesting main character. I will also say really, really interesting, obviously, that it is based on history, Chinese history. Definitely, I think, um, even if you don't read it from that perspective, after you've read the series, go and look into it because it is really, really great. But I have heard, like, a lot of people say that there are two ways to read that series. You can read it as a dark, like, high fantasy series, or you can read it as this... I don't want to say retelling, but like the the series that is based on real historic events, which I didn't know when I went into it. So after I read it, I went and I like read a whole bunch of people who had talked about it and the history behind it, and it was really really great and really really interesting. So definitely keep that in mind as well. Okay, the next book we're going to talk about is a romance, and okay, I don't want to say it was my favorite romance of the year because I think there is another romance on this list, but it was definitely up there oh my goodness and that is take a hint danny brown by talia hibbert everything about this book was incredible perfection i loved this story so much um this story follows danny and her relationship with this guy named zeph and basically after a bit of a mix-up, uh, Zaf sa saves Danny from a fire drill and it is caught like on camera and it kind of goes viral and everyone immediately starts shipping them online and so for I guess like personal reasons on both sides they both decide to fake date. Now if you know anything about me please know that fake dating is like probably one of my favorite tropes ever to exist. Fake dating hits the spot for me. It is so great <laughs> because you know it's going to become real at some point. Mm. And just every other layer of this book on top of the fake dating made this book incredible. I loved Danny as a main character. Bisexual queen. She's intelligent. She's funny. She's going through some things um, which I couldn't like relate to personally but it was written so well that I felt like I actually could relate to it and I fell in love with Zeph not me simping over a man but there you go this man caught me off guard and I loved him so so much he was just so sweet and I really loved the way that his anxiety was addressed and dealt with in the story. Definitely, definitely like hit a little bit close to home, but I, it was just, it was done so well. And it was like the perfect level of relationship building and steaminess. Serious, but also lighthearted and enjoyable. Take a Hint, Danny Brown blew me away. It was so, so good. The next book I want to talk about is, I think a thriller or a horror? And that is Bunny by Mona Awad. This book didn't make any sense to me and I loved it. <laughs> that sounds so bad. Like it, it, it did make sense to me but also not really. Uh, it definitely left me thinking 
definitely left me confused but it was just so different to anything that I have ever read and I know I said talking about Verity and Truly Devious that I don't read a lot of like mystery thriller kind of things. This isn't a mystery, definitely more like a thriller but it wasn't like scary, definitely more just like confusing and psychological but I think that is what makes it very effective as a thriller. This is, again I cannot remember the main character's name, I'm so sorry but this is about a girl and she is about to she's no she's doing she's like halfway through her masters in creative writing uh -huh. <laughs> I do that and basically in her course it is just her and this other group of girls and they are all friends and they are called the bunnies and everything kind of goes a little bit whack when our main character whose name I unfortunately cannot remember starts to kind of hang out with them outside of class I guess. Just everything about this was not what I was expecting. Could not predict what was going to happen. Truly just what the fuck the whole way through. Like literally reading it. I, I vlogged my time reading this book. I read it for the reading rush. Um, I will leave a link to the video somewhere but reading this, the number of times that I said out loud, what the fuck, while reading this was insane. And maybe like based on the plot and like, I don't know, the events itself, the like ending, which really didn't answer anything I wanted it to answer, maybe I wouldn't have given it five stars, but I could not stop thinking about this book after I put it down. Genuinely, haunts me to this day. I've had books that I have remembered and felt really really strongly about after finishing reading them and have remembered obviously of course but this like I couldn't stop thinking about it. So good, so good, five stars, genius. Okay. The next book I'm going to talk about is the other romance that I mentioned and I have to say just full credits to Noelle. If you don't know who Noelle is, if you're not watching her channel, please go check her out. I will also have a link to her channel down below. She loves this book and it was because of her that I went and picked it up and that is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. Like against all odds, not only is it an enemies to lovers, which I don't hate but it's it's not it's not my favorite um, controversial opinion I know. Um, but this is also an office romance, which, I mean, nothing against those either, but just not a general interest of mine. But then this book went ahead and it just, it became one of my favorite books of the year, so there you go. This book is about Lucy and Joshua, and basically their companies have merged together and they have to now work together. They, like, share an office and we learn that they are, like, very much opposites. Josh, uh, Joshua is like very neat, uh, wears a suit, very proper, quiet, and we learn Lucy is very, um, you know, bright, bubbly, uh, loud. She likes to have fun. She's just, you know, she wants to be friends with Joshua, but he kind of snubs her. And after he snubs her, they essentially become enemies. They hate each other. And every day they play a game basically where they try and annoy the other person. But I mean, it's enemies to lovers. Uh, they don't hate each other forever. Just everything about this, the way that they started as enemies and then moved, like the, 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 the shift from enemies to lovers, so well done. Genuinely, like genuinely believable, genuinely great. Genuinely, genuinely great. I loved both of the characters, learning about both of the characters. I also really, really liked the writing style uh, of the story, like not to shit on romance because I, I love a good romance book, I read a lot of romance, but there isn't a lot of uniqueness in like style or like tone. Sometimes the like quality of the writing is a little lacking which is fine because they make up for it in other ways. But it's not usually like a standout point. But I was reading this and I loved the writing style. I loved like the tone of Sally's writing. I loved just like just everything. Just everything could brag about this book for so so long and I know like I know I'm not the only one who likes it. I know Noelle's not the only one who likes it. So many people love this and it's definitely worth the hype. I see why everyone loves it. 
Okay, we're on to the last book, my last favorite of 2020. And this isn't really gonna be like that much of a surprise, I don't think. This is like quite a popular book. So I read this book in December and it's the first book I've ever read by this author actually. But that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is just so beautiful. Literally no other word for it beauty in every sense and form of the word. I had this book on my TBR, like my Goodreads TBR, for I think maybe almost a year before it came out because I read the synopsis and I knew that this book would make me cry and that I would love it. I hadn't read any other V. Schwab's books, like I didn't, I, I knew she's like very very popular and that like everyone really loves her writing so no, I had no doubt. I had no doubt that this was going to be a five-star read, and it was. This book follows Addie, who uh, basically makes a deal with the devil, a, a devil, a, 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 a devil-like being, to live. Uh, she's pretty much immortal, basically. She gets to just live for as long as she wants. When she's done like living, when she's decided that she's had enough, she's going to give her soul to this devil thing that she sold her soul to. Uh, but until she decides that she's had enough, she can live for as long as she wants, baby. Uh, only thing is, no one can remember who she is. She can leave, like, no mark on the world, pretty much. Um, someone, like, looks away and then looks back and they've, like, immediately forgotten who she is. This is not the shortest book. It is also very much, like, character- focused. I wouldn't say, like, it didn't necessarily feel, I mean, it is, like, it is definitely, it's entirely about Addie LaRue. It is, like, character driven, but, I, I mean, like, it didn't feel overwhelmingly like a character driven story. If, uh, that doesn't really make sense, but it just didn't. Definitely, though, like, definitely the plot does not drive this story. The plot, honestly, I will say was, like, a little bit weak. It was very predictable, very slow, not entirely gripping. Um, you read this for the emotions between the characters and that, like, the emotions that they make you feel, but also for the writing. This book is just so beautifully written and I am insanely jealous that V.E. Schwab wrote this. I wish I could write this beautifully because it is just perfection. I don't think it's going to be everyone's cup of tea, uh, like, plot-wise, character-wise, but Please read this and just appreciate the writing because it is just so, so beautiful. And it did make me cry. I think I cried once or twice throughout and then like at the end, like the, the, the bit at the end, I was just like solidly, just had like little tears, little tear tracks just for like the good solid like last 100 pages or so. Just like the, like the build up of emotion in this book is very, very good. That paired with the beautiful writing and my love for the characters. Five stars. My final favorite of 2020. Those are all the books that I wanted to talk to you about today. As I said at the start, did I say at the start? Those aren't like all the five star reads that I had. I had a bunch of other five star reads that I really really enjoyed but those were just definitely my top tier reads of last year. I really enjoyed making this video. I really hope that you liked watching it. I hope that you maybe found some books to go and read. Uh, if you do go and read them, whether you like them or not, please come and tell me that you read them and what you thought about them. I love discussing books with people. I also love hearing that people have read something because I mentioned it or I've talked about it or I recommended it. It's like, it's just such a good feeling. And seeing that as I loved these books, it would just be even, it would just be an even nicer feeling. So comment down below, message me on any of my social medias, come chat if you read any of these or if you have read any of these already, please come chat. I loved all of these books and I'd love to talk about them more. But either way, I appreciate you watching this video, especially if you've made it all the way to the end. It really means a lot to me. But that is it. I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye!